Question six here. It looks like we've got fermentation mixture. We've got some yeast. We've got some sugars in the forms of fruit and vegetable. In the absence of air, it produces ethanol. So we've got an ethanol and water mixture. Uh, the absence of air is important. Otherwise, the ethanol would oxidize in the oxygen uh, and turn into ethanol and then may further oxidize again and turn into ethanoic acid. But in the absence of oxygen or air, then we're just going to produce ethanol and water. We've got ethanol and water in the mixture here. We need to say how this apparatus is going to allow us to separate the ethanol and water and name these pieces of apparatus. Well, we've got a fractionating column, which is A. We've got a thermometer, which is B. And we've got a condenser with some cool water going through it, which is C. Quite why we need a fractionating column A, I'm not sure. Usually use a fractionating column to separate liquids when you've got uh, a large number of liquids with boiling points that are very similar to each other. We've only got two liquids, ethanol and water, and their boiling points are quite a long way apart. Ethanol boils at 79 degrees C, water boils at 100 degrees C. So quite why we need a fractional distillation with a fractionating column, I'm not sure. We could get away without having a fractionating column and we could just use simple distillation if we wanted to. However, we've been given a fractionating column, so we'll go with that. So what do we do first of all? Well, the first step will be presumably to turn the water on in the condenser C. Then heat up the flask with a Bunsen burner. The ethanol and water will start to evaporate and will be separated in the fractionating column when the water um, condenses back down and drops back into the flask. The ethanol gas will then pass through into the condenser C, where it will be condensed and cooled back down into ethanol liquid and collected in the flask. Um, and the only uh, the purpose of uh, B is to ensure that the temperature doesn't rise above 79 degrees C or the temperate the boiling point of the ethanol. Otherwise, you won't just get ethanol uh, condensing into the flask. You'll also get some water condensing into the flask as well. So turn on the water, heat up the flask with a Bunsen burner, cause the water and ethanol to turn to a gas. The gases pass up the fractionating column A. Water and ethanol are separated in A. Water condenses back into the flask. Observe the temperature. Keep the temperature below the boiling point of ethanol at or below the boiling point of ethanol. And therefore only ethanol uh, gas passes into the condenser. Uh, the condenser will cool the ethanol gas and condense into a liquid. Let's have a look at the next stage of the question then. Now this is a difficult question um, because we've been given density. So we've got density, which is mass over volume, but we've not got the mass. So we've got the density of ethanol, mass over volume, uh, and we've got the density of water, which equals the mass, uh, mass over volume of the water. But we've not been given the mass of the ethanol and we've not been given the mass of the water and we've not been given the volume of the ethanol and we've not been given the volume of the water. What we're trying to find out, you should assume the volume of the sample is equal to the sum of the volumes of the water and the ethanol. Use this data to calculate the mass. So we want the mass of ethanol in the sample collected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do spoilers first of all. I'm going to show you how this can be worked out. First of all, you've got to give the mass of ethanol a letter, letter M, because I've not got a true value for the um, for the mass of ethanol, and that's what we're trying to work out. So we're trying to work out the mass of the ethanol. I'm just going to give it the letter M, and from that point, so the mass of the water is the mass of the sample. Take away M, because if M is the mass of the ethanol, and the mass of the sample is 16, there's only ethanol and water in there. Um, 16, which is the total mass of the sample, take away M, the mass of the ethanol, must be the mass of the water. So now, if I know density is mass over volume, I've got the masses of the ethanol and the water, albeit with the letter M in there. I know the densities of each of them. I can say that volume is mass over density, because I've got the masses and the densities. I can work out the volume of each. The volume of the ethanol is the mass of the ethanol, which is M divided by its density, 0.79. The volume of the water is the, its mass, 16 take away M, divided by 1, which is its density. Now then, the volume of the sample is 20, 
and that's going to equal the volume of the ethanol plus the volume of water. So 20, the volume of the sample, is the volume of the ethanol, which we've just worked out, m divided by 0 0.79, uh, added to the volume of the water, which is 16, take away m divided by 1. Now, so anything divided by 1 is itself. So let's simplify that. 20 equals m divided by 0 0.79, add 16, take away m, so I can forget the divide by 1. Now, I don't like divide by 0 0.79, so I'm going to multiply everything through by 0 0.79. 20 multiplied by 0 0.79 is 15.8. M divided by 0 0.79 multiplied by 0 0.79 cancels out the 0 0.79. That just equals M. 16 multiplied by 0 0.79 is 12.64, and M multiplied by 0 0.79 is 0 0.79M. Take away M, take away 0 0.79M. Now I'm going to rearrange it. I'm going to take the 12.64 across to the other side of the equal sign. So plus, plus 12.64 becomes minus 12.64. And that then leaves on the other side m take away 0.79m. 1m take away 0.79m is 0.21m. 15.8 take away 12.64 is 0.21m. I can solve m now. These two numbers subtract from each other at 3.16 equals 0.12m. Divide by 0.12m on this side. Divide by 0.12m throughout rather. 3.16 divided by 0.21 equals 15 grams. So my mass of ethanol is 15 grams and that's what I wanted to find out.